Hello and welcome back to John's Random Review. I've got a tutorial for you today and it's about how to freeze copper pipes with water, obviously, with water. Now the reasons I might need to do this are, in this case, it's um, a massive heating system with loads and loads of radiators and I just wanted to move a radiator onto another wall and I didn't want to drain down the whole of the system. But even if you've got like a domestic system, you might want don't, you might not want to drain it down because it can cause problems and it's a ball lake sometimes filling it back up. And also in um, domestic heating systems, it should have an inhibitor that helps stop the heating pipes getting all gunked up with um, black sludge from the radiators. But if it's got an inhibitor in the system, that can cause problems with the timing of what we're going to do today. You can also freeze hot and cold pipes um, from a tank, you know, gravity feed from a tank in a loft. And also you can freeze mains cold water. But let's go back to these two heating pipes. Before we start, um, what you need to do is, before you start freezing, is to turn the heating off so there's no pump running. That's really important. And if they are, the pipes are hot, let them cool down a little bit and um, before you start freezing it, it'll just make the whole process easier. Now these are 15 mil pipes. Um, it, I also use it to freezing microball pipes, which is eight mil or 10 mil heating pipes. They're dead easy to freeze. And then when it goes up to 22 mil pipe, I don't like using this method for freezing them um, pipes. It makes me a bit nervous. I think I've done it once, but this stuff of you, this method of freezing pipes, really, really, I'd say for 15 mil only. You can get into a bit of a dodgy territory if you go any bigger, but you can get some freezer apparatus that'll freeze um, 22 and 28. I'm not sure about 35 possible, possible, I'm not sure. Okay, enough waffling on. I think I think we'd better get on with the job. Time is money and we haven't got much of either, as I say. So let's get this job sorted. As you can see, I've already put frozen one of the pipes and put a valve on. And that's going to be important in a minute. I'll get into that in a minute, why that's important. But what we'll do first, I'll just give you a quick look at this. Um, the, the radiator I've taken off the wall and we just need to freeze the other pipe and get a ball fix valve on there and how we're gonna do it with this stuff for co2 gas in a canister this is a 300 milliliter milliliter can and if you're a pro like me bloody hell that's some feet if you're a pro like me you can do two 15 mil freeze it jobs with that can if you're a real pro you can actually you do it in half a half a bloody um can but if you haven't done this before maybe get a couple of cans there is a cost implication to all this you know these, um, I think this can of freeze it, freeze it spray, about 30, just over 30 quid. And you have to buy this actual sleeve as well. So it could be costing, I don't know, 40 quid maybe. But if it takes, saves you time having to drain a heating da system down, I always say that's got to be a good thing. Give it a quick spray. Now it comes out as a gas, but it's obviously liquid in the actual can. So this is the important bit. This is the sleeve, the foam sleeve that goes around the pipe that actually traps the CO2 liquid in there and it freezes the pipe. Do you remember before when I said I'd already frozen one? If you're doing a pair of pipes, it's always best. As soon as it's, you've got the job done, got the valve on, the one you, you've frozen, get this um, sleeve off straight as you can. It's very cold, so be careful and get it on the other pipe. That's what that what that means. The second pipe will freeze a lot easier. So you'll be saving on the old CO2. Anyway, let's get back to the job. What you do is you put this sleeve around the pipe like this and uh, make sure there's a there's normally an inner little bit of um, foam sleeve. Make sure that's tucked around as well. You want a tight fit around the pipe. So then it comes with this little plastic um, bit to connect the two ends together so it stops it flopping off. So get that pushed on. They don't always come with that, but most of them do. Now this is a bit of a clever thing. I don't know with every set of um, freeze it stuff comes with this, but this is a zip tie that you can actually reuse again. So that's pretty handy. So it's got two zip ties, put one on each side, make sure they're nice and snug. Now then, 
if the pipe's vertical, it's a whole different ball game and it's a lot harder. I might go into that in a different video. But today we're just going to do a horizontal one. So I've got two of the two zip ties on, quite tight. And the next thing, you see that little hole in the top? What you do is you get your can of freeze it spray. I've probably got a bit of about ha just over half a can left of this spray. So I keep on spraying a bit in. As long as you don't see any liquid come out where the actual spray nozzle is, um, you're all right. So just spray it in for like 30 seconds or so. Now, if the CO2 liquid starts coming out of the end on both ends and dripping, just stop. Just stop for a minute and then move the nozzle about and so you could get the actual CO2 in a different part of that in between the two zip clips. As you can see, I've got two holes in there. So I'm spraying it. And if it sprays out a little bit of like vapour out there, don't worry about that. So, and then keep on stopping if you're not sure how much you've used and shaking the can a bit. So you, I always like to leave a bit. I don't like to act, empty the can into it. So I'll tell you why in a minute. It's already started to freeze now, but this is really important. Leave it now. Don't touch anything for at least 10 minutes. Let that CO2 um, freeze the pipe. So if you do that, you're not going to have any bother. And what I do, another thing I do is kind of like after 10 minutes, is spray a bit on the outer sleeve and also on the copper pipe to make sure it's frozen. And then we can open the radiator valve slowly. And if there's no water gushing out or no pressure, we know the pipe's frozen. If you're not working on a um, radiator pipe, maybe you could open a tap or you could undo a compression fitting. Now, although the clock's ticking a little bit now, because you've, you've got it frozen, if you keep on, you've probably got a good 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, so don't get yourself into a flap. If you're having problems with this bit of it, cutting the pipe or getting the valve on, spray a bit more into the, into the actual blue foam bit so you can keep it frozen. Always have a good um, sharp pipe slice, as you can see. It's done it. That pipe is completely frozen. It's not a mains cold water pipe, remember. It's only got about probably a, a bar of pressure in it. But now it's just a case of getting the, the ball of fix valve back on and then undoing them two zip clips and taking the sleeve off and then just let it thaw. But sometimes if you made a bit of a rush, I do play the blow lamp on it a little bit. Oh, I could use my new Makita um, hot air gun for that, couldn't I? So then I can check the compression joint on that ball of fixed valve. And then no, it's easy. Blood my neck. It's easy to do. Get on with it. Even, I've got to say, even maybe a joiner could do it. Imagine that, a joiner. Oh, no, no, I've gone too far there. Sorry. A joiner could not do this. No way. Anyway, so there we go. I've got the, um, the two valves on there, as you can see. So I'm ready to do the new pipe work um, to the new radiator. So one, um, just about a full can, 300 litres of um, freezer spray. And then I'm good to go. Have you checked out that bucket? I've talked about this bucket before. It's a little flexible green plumbing bucket for catching drips. And it can go onto various size pipes. Absolutely brilliant. Anyway, that's how to freeze some copper pipes. Okay, thanks for watching. Random plumbing is rad. Rock on.